Manchester City are Premier League champions, but questions remain about how the club does business. People don't know if this team, this whole project, is based on some wrongdoing in the past. That's because City stand accused of over 100 breaches of the Premier League's financial rules. Some of those charges are extremely serious. I mean, there, there, there are, you know, the claim is that they've been basically been falsifying their accounts. City deny doing this, and the questions they face stretch back years because this is a club transformed from one that went decades without a trophy to one that's won the league five years out of the last six. That is a long way from where it was in 2008. Financially, we were almost out of business. But it was about to become the richest club in the world. Sheikh Mansour is a billionaire member of the Abu Dhabi royal family. His investment company bought Manchester City and the spending began. Three years on, UEFA, the governing body of football in Europe, introduced something called financial fair play. It was designed to stop clubs spending more than they earn. And to some observers, it was clear why. I think FFP was brought in principally to reduce the over-reliance on very wealthy benefactors because that's simply not financially sustainable. UEFA said it wants to protect clubs from financial trouble and to keep football fair. And in 2014, it fined nine clubs for breaking the rules. Manchester City was one of them. It paid a 60 million euro fine while insisting it hadn't broken the rules. That was 2014. Four years later, the German newspaper Der Spiegel published this investigation based on leaked emails from inside Manchester City. It claimed the club's newfound glory is rooted in lies. And the story connected to a central claim about City's finances. We've seen this repeated accusation of overly inflated sponsorship deals. In other words, the allegation is that City agreed deals with sponsors with a connection to Abu Dhabi. The sponsors then paid more than the market value. That allowed the club to inflate its income, which in turn allowed the club to spend more money while appearing to be within the rules of financial fair play. Manchester City denies doing this, but UEFA investigated. And in 2020, it concluded Manchester City committed serious breaches of the UEFA financial fair play regulations by overstating its sponsorship revenue. It banned City from European club competitions for two years, but the club's position remained unequivocal. The most important thing I have to say today is that the allegations are not true. And City took the matter to CAS, the Court of Arbitration for Sports, and contested all of the charges, including the sponsorship allegation. When the case went before Cass. The verdict was that they couldn't find any compelling evidence to say that that was the case, and that's why City's Champions League ban was lifted. City were back in Europe, but that wasn't all. The ruling said City did fail to cooperate with UEFA authorities and that most of the alleged breaches were either not established or time barred. In other words, some alleged breaches weren't considered on a technicality they've been brought too late. One academic describes that in these terms. In my personal view, what I think's happened is we've been able to exploit a few legal loopholes here so that Manchester City have never really had to answer the charges that, that were brought to them. And City's rivals were unimpressed by the outcome. Liverpool's Jurgen Klopp called it bad for football. Jose Mourinho, then at Spurs, called it disgraceful. City, though, called it a validation of their evidence. And in 2021, they reached the final of the Champions League. They also won the Premier League that year and the next. And then, as City chased the league this season, in February, there was another development. The dominant force in the English game, hit with an unprecedented catalogue of charges by the Premier League that, if in its most severe case, could see it expelled from the league. The period in question is 2009 to 2018, the first nine full seasons under City's Abu Dhabi ownership. The charges included the failure to report financial results, in particular with respect to its revenue, including sponsorship revenue. It's also accused of not giving full details of players' salaries and failing to cooperate with the league's investigation. If the charges are upheld, losing a title is one possible punishment, but there are others the most likely sanction will either be a financial one or a points deduction. We're not at this stage, though. City said it was surprised by the charges and denies them. A statement pointed to a 
comprehensive body of irrefutable evidence that exists in support of its position. And the BBC's Dan Rowan asked City's manager, Pep Guardiola, about this. How confident are you that you have been told everything? Has it in any way affected your belief in the club? My first thought is that we are already being condemned. So like it's happened, what's happened right now, these weeks after Monday, it's happened the same what happened in UEFA. The club proved that we're completely innocent. I said to them, what happened? So Pep, we did anything wrong. But this case won't be quick. Days before City won the title, the Times reported that Manchester City have launched a legal fight against the Premier League charges. They're questioning the legality of the process. It could be years before what City did and didn't do is settled. People are going to continue to raise their eyebrows uh, about City until the Premier League either it can prove some, you know, some kind of um, financial misconduct or City can clear the name. And so, as City's fans celebrate another title and their team's domination of English football, the club that's just won the Premier League remains accused by the Premier League of extensively breaking its rules and gaining a financial advantage.